Hi, good morning. It's Elgin again with my morning coffee. Ah, there will be coffee in heaven. Trust me. Trust me on that. <laughs> uh, just continuing on uh, with my uh, Bible studies. And uh, the last time we were together, I was sharing with you hearing God's voice. And um, I'd like to continue with that, but first I'd like to start kind of with an analogy. Okay, let's pretend. Remember that as a kid? Let's pretend that I'm a famous person, like the President of the United States. Let's just pretend that. And I say to you, wow, hey, I've been watching you. You wasn't aware that I was watching you, but I've been kind of watching you and uh, kind of like you. How you doing? You're totally surprised because I'm the president of the United States. And you didn't know that I was watching you. And you've always wanted to have a relationship, a friendship, with the president of the United States. And now I'm contacting you. Total surprise to you. And I say, okay, great. I want to have this relationship with you. But um, I'm going to contact you at first uh, by email. And then we're going to move over to, um, you know phone calls as the relationship progressed and uh, you know from time to time I'll visit you in person how does that sound wouldn't you sound ridiculous if you said uh, I'm sorry um, emails don't work for me and you know they're kind of impersonal and um, as for phone calls you know uh, my phone bill, you know, it, it's pretty high now. You're probably going to run it up. Or, you know, what if somebody else calls me? I'll have to click off of you. Why don't we just switch to you seeing me in person? And um, I'll give you a schedule. And then you can meet me, you know, whenever I, you know, call you. Now, that's kind of ridiculous because... Of, it, it's ridiculous because of the president's stature. In fact, any major uh, celebrity or high-profile figure, whether political or social, they get to set the agenda for the relationship. And it's purely based on their status. If I'm the president of the United States and I tell you... We're going to start with emails. Then we're going to progress to phone calls. Then we're going to uh, go on to us meeting in person. Because of my status, I set the relationship. And if you want to have a relationship, that's what you have to accept. You don't have to accept this. These are my terms. Okay, so if you don't accept it, you know, there's not going to be a relationship. Now, what would you do? Some of you might have said, well, I don't need to have a relationship with you. I see girls doing this. I don't need to have a relationship with you. If you're not going to do things according to my stand as well, you can just walk. People do that same thing with God all the time. Oh, they do it all the time. You see, God, like I said in a previous video, wants to have a relationship with. He has always desired that. You see that way, way back in the Old Testament when he go when Moses goes to uh, Pharaoh. Actually, let's see if we, we can find that scripture. It's found in Exodus chapter 6, verse 1. Uh, then the Lord said to Moses, Go to Pharaoh. And say to him, this is what the Lord, the God of the Hebrews says, let my people go. Why? So that they may worship me. That was the bottom line. God wanted Pharaoh to let his people go so that they could worship him. So that they, let my people go, in other words, so that they can have a relationship with me. So God has always wanted a relationship with but just like in my analogy, since God is the king, 
since he's the celebrity, the big celebrity, then he gets to set how he's going to communicate. And one of the ways that God communicates is through his word, by reading the Bible. Okay, Jesus said, my words are spirit and they are life. The Bible contains the words, the thoughts of God. It, it contains the records of holy men and women of God that they wrote down as God dealt with them, as he spoke with them directly, okay? That's one way he communicates. Another way he communicates is through dreams and visions. That's just how he does it. Now, if you recall what I just said a few moments ago, the celebrity gets to dictate how he's going to communicate. And a lot of people short-circuit a potential relationship with God. They cut off hearing his voice because, well, they don't agree with how he wants to communicate. Well, I don't think the Bible is the real word of God. What about this? What about that? Blah, 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 blah. Well, you know, I don't believe that God communicates with me in dreams, even though the Bible says otherwise, that he communicates with us in dreams. I don't like it when God uses symbolic language. You know, you know, he should make it plain. He should, you know, put it across this way. He should speak to me in an audible voice that sounds like James Earl Jones or Morgan Freeman or whoever your favorite celebrity is. That's how God should, you know, communicate with me. Going back to my analogy, if you want to have a relationship with a big celebrity, you don't get to set the terms of how they communicate. And if you do, and a lot of people do, then there will be no communication. So you have to ask yourself, am I the one who is cutting off a relationship before it starts. I'm going to say something that uh, some theologians um, may disagree with. So I'm letting you know this is just me saying this. If you are, and I hate to use this term because it, it, it sounds kind of antagonistic, but um, I, I don't know other, what other term to use. If you are, at this point, an unbeliever, and by that I mean a person who has not yet decided that you want to have a relationship with God, that you don't want to do the Jesus thing, that you, you know, are skeptical about the Bible. I'm mean, in order, but but you're kind of curious about having a relationship with God. I'm going to ask you to, when you read the Bible, suspend your belief system for a moment. Reason why I'm saying that is in order to read, you know, this is not a brainwashing kind of thing or a pretend kind of thing, but in order to receive truth from God, you, you know, you have to, at some point, actually in the beginning, you have to, I, I'm groping for words, accept the possibility that this is true. If we're reading the Bible, we have to accept this is the Word of God. If this is the Word of God, then anything that's contained in it must be valid. Even if right now it seems improbable or impossible to me. Start there when you're reading. Start there. And this shouldn't be too hard because we do this all the time. We do this when we go in, when, when we read book, books and adventure novels. We do this when we're uh, looking at our favorite uh, drama or science fiction show. We suspend our belief system because we know if we don't turn that part of our brains off, we won't enjoy the movie, we won't enjoy the book, we'll be constantly picking the plot apart, saying, this can never happen, this can never happen, I don't agree with this, I don't agree with that, yeah, that's good, this couldn't happen. That kind of stuff is going to short circuit your hearing God. So, ah, you know, start, rather, with the possibility